is a cartwheel entrance to a Gennaro. I would not recommend this being your first exposure to a Gennaro, so I would highly recommend to try like a brass monkey entrance, but that being said, you don't have to have a solid Gennaro from any entrance before you try this one. Um, part of the reason for that is our bodies are all different. You might find that going from a brass monkey has always kind of blown your mind, didn't quite work with your body, your brain, and then maybe you try it from this way and everything works, okay? So what's considered sometimes the harder entrance sometimes works better for some people, okay? So I don't want to discourage you, but I do want to caution you, okay? So this is not an easy entrance. Not that Gennaro is ever easy. Is Gennaro ever easy? No. So for this one, um, upside, you're close to the ground. Worst case scenario, you don't get near Gennaro, you come right back down where you started, okay? Um, for this, everything once you are in your Gennaro are the same as any other entrance as far as like the glute engagement, the contact points, the push, the let go, all of those things, okay? But it's the entrance, everything's gotta happen at once, okay? So for this one, for this cartwheel, you don't have to have a cartwheel on the ground to be able to make this one work, but, that being said, if you are someone that does cartwheels on the ground, you may find that your dominant cartwheel side might also be your dominant side on this because your body kind of naturally dives into it that way. Doesn't mean it won't work on the other side. I mean, I cartwheel on both sides and one side feels a little more comfortable, okay? So like I said, you don't have to have a cartwheel, but if you do, you may want to start with the side that is your dominant cartwheel. So let's talk about what's happening with our arms first before we even get into what's happening with the legs. You're going to start away from the pole, but initially, you're not just going to dive into it, okay? That never ends well, okay? So initially, you're going to go, you know, Macarena style, tick, 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 one piece at a time to put it all together. And then as you start to know exactly where your body, arms, legs, all those things are going and engagement of all the muscles is going, then it starts going faster, okay? So initially, it's not going to look like a cartwheel, okay? So if I'm going to end up in my left Gennaro armpit hole, I'm going to do a cartwheel with my right side. I think that's right. If I'm leading with my right hand, I think that's considered a right cartwheel. Okay, so which means I'm gonna step towards the pole with my right foot. My right arm is going to lead to the pole. It's gonna slide down the pole. My left arm follows, also sliding down the pole and pulling in to my armpit. Okay, and really important, of course, is that last little squeeze of the elbow to the side to get that strong armpit hold because remember, that's gonna be your foundation for your Gennaro later, okay? So a couple of things to caution when you're going into this. First of all, A, height of your hands, okay? If I go into this and I put my hands here, this means now the difference between my butt is down here, my elbow is up here, my butt has to get from here to there. That's a pretty um, aggressive cartwheel, okay? So dive down lower. This entrance to a Gennaro tends to be very low, okay? So if you're in a low ceiling place, this might be your jam, okay? So for this one, think of cartwheeling down until your torso is about parallel to the ground, relatively close-ish, okay? It might be a little bit higher. And also just like so many things in pull, once you get comfortable with this lower, you might feel comfortable getting a little bit higher up because you might feel more confident with being more aggressive in your entrance and maybe even kind of jumping into a little more. Okay, but initially think of going into it and sliding everything down till you're almost parallel to the floor. Okay, that's your arm height, arm distance, much like with any other entrance to a Gennaro. I want to make sure that A, my top arm, my elbow is really squeezing to my side. B, my bottom arm, I don't want to have it so far away from my top arm that it forces my chest to turn to the pole. Okay, so as much as like in a regular cartwheel, we kind of end up with this, you know, straight line-ish. With this entrance to the Gennaro, you have to kind of close that off ever so slightly because we're going to end up opening our chest to the other way. Okay, so it starts kind of cartwheeling one direction, but then it ends up shifting to cartwheeling the other direction. Okay, so make sure that bottom hand doesn't extend as far as it can go. You want to make sure it kind of chokes up just a little bit so you still have a little bit of push with that arm so that you'll be able to rotate your chest and your hips to finish the Gennaro, okay? So that's what's happening with the arms, okay? So initially on this, before you even think about your feet leaving the ground, go through this a few times. Whoop, just literally step arms, okay? Whether your hands are touching the pole until they, you know, get into the position 
or they're touching up high and sliding down to the position, that's up to you. You know, some people will not touch the pole and then grab into it. Other people like to kind of guide their hands down the pole. You're going to figure out what works best for you. Okay. Your style, your preference, artsy fartsy, all that stuff. Okay. So that's what's happening with our arms. Now we got to start talking about what's happening with our legs because our legs are going to help dictate what happens with this. So I'm stepping into the pole with my right foot, which means once my arms are in position, my left leg is going to do kind of a flare kick thing. And it's kind of like a, I totally forget the name for it, but there's a martial arts kick that has this name, but brain fart, totally forgetting. But it's going to kind of do, think of doing a, um, uh, mer- total brain fart right now. Can't think of the name of the move. Um, (laughs) But that kind of rotation movement with your legs, you're going to think of kind of doing that with the second leg because we want to kind of flare that leg up so that we can start to get that hip to that elbow. Because remember, that's our platform. Okay. So to start with this, once again, we go super slow in the beginning. Don't just throw yourself into the cartwheel. Let's do that kind of ter- kind of person. Some people are, and they crush it the first time. Personally, I don't want to hurt my body, and I like to kind of know what I'm getting into before I completely throw myself into it. Okay? So you're going to go nice and slow. One arm, two arms, dive it down. As my body drops, the second leg comes up. And from there, it's going to make a rounding motion initially, okay, up high. And I'm going to push off of my standing leg, my right leg, to catch. Okay. So that's going to be your next spot. Now we're combining what's happening with our legs and what's happening with our arms. A, this better be solid because otherwise that leg's going to kip and everything's going to come sliding down. (laughs) B, just starting to kind of mix and match all the parts together. (laughs) Okay. So it's a little hop. It's a one, two, and just getting it here. Once that starts to make sense and you're like, okay, I'm landing, I'm landing, I'm landing. Then we're going to start getting that second leg into play. The second leg pushed off to kind of give us a little oomph to get into our landing position. When we want to commit into the Gennaro and or start to get some spin on the pole, the second leg, it's going to push off and swing, kind of like a hooking heel kick, okay? So it's got to continue with that motion, okay? We've talked about arms. We've talked about legs. The legs kind of bring the hips. Where is your head going, okay? Really important. And this is also one of those do as I say, not as I do. Um, When I do Gennaro's now, I look anywhere and everywhere. Sometimes I'll look at the audience. Sometimes I'll look at my toes, whatever. But I'm also comfortable enough in my Gennaro that I can do that now. In the beginning, I want you to remember where your eyes go, your body's going to follow. So if you're trying to go into your Gennaro and you're looking to see if your feet are going to the right place, that's going to turn your chest back into the pole. Don't look towards the pole. Okay, so you have to trust, you have to know where your legs are going because your face needs to look away from your legs. Okay, so you have to know exactly where those legs are going so you don't feel like you have to check in on them. Okay, but the tendency is is as we go into this, we want to kind of like, come on, little buddy. Okay, so as your legs go, chest is going to turn away. Okay, so that's slow, tick, 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 all the steps. That second leg, when it goes into the Gennaro, muy importante, and this is the same with any Gennaro entrance, but with this one, that much more because of the rotation that we're starting in, you have to really think about engaging this butt cheek and extending that leg back, okay? So think about like that opening of your hip flexor. So if this leg just kicks and pikes, it's gonna pull you out of your Gennaro. You have to think of kicking and swinging it behind you, almost like you're trying to put yourself in a cobra position, you know, like you'd push up into a cobra with your back around the pole. Okay. So it's that much more important on this one to use that glute engagement to get you up into it. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to go tick, tick, tick real slow. Cartwheeling step with the right foot, right hand comes down, left hand comes down, pulls into the armpit, left leg comes up, jump and swing. Okay. That last little swing of that leg, I don't know if you can see my little hiccup, it's so much harder to do it slow (laughs) than it is to do it faster. So get all the parts together. And then when you're ready to actually like everything makes sense, don't try to go that slow with the legs. It's really hard. (laughs) Okay. I almost fell out of it. Okay. So once you've got everything down, it's a kick kick. Okay. The more you swing that second leg back, that's what's going to start to give your spin. If you just cartwheel this way into it, 
that's not going to create centripetal force, which means you're going to be dead in the water with your genera, which if you're on a static pole and you don't care, perfect. You stay exactly where you want it to be. But if we want to actually have it spin and or have that be the beginning of your spinning pole pass, you're going to need to have a little more whip with it. Okay. So as we're in it, step and kick. And then you can use that to start your pole pass if you want. So this is a cartwheel entrance to a Gennaro. Take it step by step. There are a lot of moving parts in this one, okay? So don't get frustrated if you go to try this out and it doesn't feel like it's anywhere close to it. Just work on one step at a time. If one step is still taking a lot of mental process, don't rush to go to the next step, okay? Because all of these things have to happen together. This is a momentum entrance to a Gennaro, which is one of the nice things, but momentum only helps you if you're putting it in the right direction. If you're using momentum, but it's going the wrong direction, it's going to do the opposite of helping you, okay? So as you start to get a feel for everything that should be going on, direction, all of those things, even if you might not have the strength to do this in slow motion, as you can go a little bit faster with it, you're going to find that you'll be able to get into it, okay? So take your time with this one. Work it, you know, one little increment of time. Make sure your arms know what they're doing. Make sure your legs know what they're doing putting it all together, okay? Getting that little hop to get your hip in place. Also on this one, because I know this is gonna be a question, um, where does that hip come to on your elbow when you first go into it? It's not gonna be in its final position, okay? When I first go into that little humph to get my hip, you know, the first step when the leg comes up, where my elbow and my side first meet is not where they end up in the final Gennaro, okay? Because sometimes people are like, oh, it should be like right here and it's not going there. It starts this here. It's kind of on my thigh sometimes. And it doesn't necessarily go all the way to whoop until that second leg engages and pulls around and that bottom arm pushes, okay? So if you're thinking that when you hop into it, it's gonna go right to that spot, it might. For some people it does, some people it doesn't. Body proportions, things like that, there's just so many variables, okay? So cartwheel transition to Gennaro. Have some funsies with this one play around with this one. If it's starting to make sense, everything's coming together and you're getting into it, challenge yourself to see how much momentum you can get with this one, okay? Because like I said, for this one, most often for people in the beginning, that second leg doesn't get quite the kick and they end up with a very bleh kind of spinning pull pass. So first get comfortable with the Gennaro, make sure the Gennaro is happening consistently and then really start thinking about how could I whip that second leg into it that much more to create a little more centripetal force. So. Have some funsies, let me know how it goes.